I'm Blair Gilbert, Gilbert's Pro Hardware and MrHardware.com, here talking about holiday safety and wiring safety in this segment. What we have here, when you're out the side putting in your holiday lights, one thing that's nice to have is the GFCI, or GFI, which stands for a ground fault circuit interrupter, that would be outside of your house. You will know it's a GFCI for a couple reasons. One, it will have a test reset button on it. and they're usually always in a square decor frame, but they, if they don't have that test button on it, it's not a safety receptacle. This device, when installed properly and when working properly, measures electricity that leaves the two prongs that most of your lights use. It does not measure against the ground at all. So if you're outside doing wiring or getting a shock or something's wrong with your wiring, any electricity is missing, 700 50 milliamps or some very small amount comes missing, this trips and shuts down. You have to come over, you have to, first you have to find out why it tripped, then you come over, you can reset it and continue on with your project. This is very important to have in outside lighting because this protects you from getting an electrical shock. Now, even though this protects against shock, this does not protect against overload. This is not a circuit breaker. This is not measuring, if, it, if you start drawing 20 amps through this, It'll give you 20 amps as long as 20 amps leaves and goes back those two slots. So, if I important to have, don't over trust it. Uh, not to be confused sometimes with the power strip, which has a, a circuit breaker or a switch on it. Many people think that there's some protection there. This is protecting just the strip. So if you plug in more than 15 amps into this power strip and it exceeds 15 amps, this will trip. That's terrific. But when you plug it in the wall, this particular circuit could be operating your TV set, your sump pump, other stuff in your house, and this will know anything about any other electricity being used. So there's some security here, but there's some fault security sometimes. You have to know everything that's on a circuit when you're going to run a circuit up real high. Now it protects your circuit downstairs in your circuit panel, could be in your utility room, it will either be fuses or circuit breakers. Uh, quick thing about fuses, all the old fuses, fuses, the TLs, are all large base, which happens to be the same size as a light bulb. So when these are installed, if you were blowing 15 amp fuses and you didn't know how to correct it, most amateurs will go buy 20 amp fuses and put those in. The problem is, your wiring was rated, typically, for the 15 amps. When you put in a 20, your wiring can get overloaded. When it overloads, it can get hot, it can burn. There's, so what they did is they came up with a SL fuse. We just simply think of them as a small fuse. These have smaller ceramic threads than the standard fuse, and the threads are different, and the different sizes of fuse. So a 20 amp fuse will not screw in to a 15 amp hole. These are our world's way of protecting us from putting in bigger fuses. We threw in a couple circuit breakers, same thing. These are not always to be, none of this is always to be trusted totally faithfully because sometimes these breakers can stick and that trip when they're supposed to. Um, anyway, they're just convenient so that when you trip them, they trip out. Now to show you what goes along with these breakers is 15 amp breakers and 15 amp fuses will use 14 gauge wire. Here's a sample of the size of it just to give you an idea how big that diameter of the wire is. If you think you have bigger wire, here's a 20 amp wire known as 12 gauge wire. Skosh bigger than the 14 gauge wire capable of safely carrying 20 amps throughout the house. And just to confuse you a little, I threw in a 30 amp wire which is called a 10 gauge wire. This is typically feeding your dryer, sometimes your air conditioners, stuff like that. Then. When we go to the receptacles in your house, if your house was 1955 or older, your wiring in your house is only two wire wiring. You have a black wire and a white wire. You will not have a ground wire. That's all that will be in your electrical boxes. So if you take and you go and buy a grounded outlet with the ground, third hole, and you install that in a location where there's only two wires, you are unsafely providing somebody with the ground that is not hooked to anything. Running a wire from the ground to the electrical box did not 
achieve anything unless the electrical box is grounded, which in 1950 they weren't. So don't be too quick to take out all your two-prong outlets and put in three-prong. Another thing about outlets is they're polarized. There's a little slat and a larger slat. A lot of your extension cords have a small prong and a wide prong. This is for child safety. This works very well because what happens is, is when your child is in there with a paper clip out of your paper clip out, out of your line of sight and they put the paper clip go to put it in the receptacle the black the small hole is the black wire known as the hot wire. The larger slot is goes to the white wire which is the safer or neutral wire less chance of getting a shock. This wire is typically equal with ground which you're standing on. The black wire is 115 volts different from ground. So if you grab this wire and you're grounded you're going to get a shock. You grab this wire typically you're not. I don't recommend you playing that game but that's what goes on. Then to show what happens when we overload a circuit we put a thousand watt of lights on this single wire. There. See the wire is slowly getting red as it's feeding those light bulbs. The problem with electricity is it will take and pass as much electricity as the draw is until the wire gets red hot and it'll take and melt and burn. So when you overload a circuit, you overload any of these circuits by plugging in too many lights, putting in too big a fuse, not using any precautions, you can take, and this wire could be somewhere in your house, could be attached on your roof, so you never want to overload a circuit because we just showed you what happens.